And hello, 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 hello. Hello out there to all of you, my darling honey. I am Big Meech, and this here is a Big Meech moment, okay? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I'm coming to you from my um, my hotel room. <laughs> we went down here in Orlando, Florida for uh, Big Boy Pride, honey. For those of you who are not familiar with Big Boy Pride, honey, this is the time of the year where uh, uh, men of color, uh, same gender loving men of color come together, honey. Those of us who are 250 pounds or better uh, will come together and convene, honey, in ways that we do, where we are the body beautiful children, honey, with all three stomachs and big old man boobs and carrying on, being sexy and frolicking the way that we frolic and carrying on, honey. <laughs> we had a bombastic time, and I'm going to say this out loud, honey. You know, I came down here because I said, okay, this is going to be my last year, because you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a man of a certain age, and blah blah blah. Uh, you know all that kind of stuff and the, the the children are are really you know this is their time however this year we've had so many uh freshmen that entered you know because we, we we do this on the on the school system freshman sophomores uh, junior senior alumni right of course i'm alumni uh, but we've had so many freshmen come in that were over 40 you know, embracing who they are, embracing their size, understanding that there's empowerment here. So after that, and, and just being here, having missed last year, um, gave me a sense of hope because the kids were like, bitch, no, we need you, honey. You are a staple. I was told I am a staple here, you know, and there is no BBP without you. We need to have you here, honey, because there are folks who look for you and depend on you for guidance and carrying on. And it's, it's really something because the discussions that we have are very intergenerational, you know, which is why I wanted to come live real quick. Um, I only have one a few moments because checkout is at 11 o'clock and yeah, I did this on purpose so that I don't get long winded. <laughs> um, but here's the thing, and this here is for all of my same gender loving people out there or the alphabet children, my heteroattractional children who may listen to this, you, you may not understand it or you may not get it. Okay, then again, you just might, because those of you who are out there who are into pegging and carrying on where you are, you as a man are on the bottom and you allow for your, uh, your female partner to penetrate you using an apparatus, a dildo or whatever, and you and get off on it, okay? That's your business. However, uh, the topic is, is top shaming becoming a thing? And that was a discussion that we had because I have someone who, um, looking at him and his appearance, you know, he's not the most masculine of men or whatever. He has a very soft face, you know, soft like his mom and carrying on. He said, I look just like my mother. But when folks see me or whatever, they automatically assume that I'm either versatile or that I'm a bottom. He said, but I'm a total top, you know, and that there is that so the conversation evolved into well it's okay for bottoms to say they are versatile bottoms and what i mean by that is most of the time they are bottoms but every now and again they will you utilize their penis and will penetrate someone and it's okay for verse bottoms to exist however in the minds of bottoms to say that i'm a verse top which means most of the time that i am I am on the top and I am the giver. There are those moments where I want to receive. Okay. And we have a lot of bottoms who feel as though for a top to say that, that makes, that doesn't make him a top. That automatically throws him over into bottom category. So why is it that we have this particular dynamic within the alphabet children community? Why is it that we do this to ourselves? And what is it about this top shaming that has us on the fence and have us in this conundrum to where uh, those who are tops and those who, now here's the, let me, let me, before I go there, here's the, another thing I want you guys to understand. Uh, sexual position does not necessarily mean or equate to anybody's masculinity. Okay, because another thing that we have in our community, it's okay to see two masculine men in a relationship. 
Okay, two masculine looking men and carrying on, you know, it's okay to see them in a relationship. But we frown upon two femme children who are in relationship. Okay, we frown upon that. And we don't necessarily see them as two men in a relationship. We tell we call it, we tell them they dyke it. Bitch, where is the man? Both of y'all are fucking women. Where are where's the man? And that's something that we do internally with each other. So I can only imagine what our hetero attractional counterparts are thinking. You know, when, when they see us and carry on, because this is what helps build the fodder and a, a lot of the, the hatred and stuff that goes on because our heteroattractional counterparts, they are looking for the feminine, the, the you know, the, the, um, the uh, less masculine man so they can point out and say, oh, that's gay. You know what I'm saying? You can have that that reference, but masculine men who are in who are on the front, or, or not, well, not on the front, but masculine men who have no characteristics of what "quote unquote" being gay is supposed to mean to the outside world, and um, they "quote unquote" pass. You know, our, our heteroattractional children, honey, they don't know how to handle that. You know, but in this particular case, when we're talking about top shaming, why is it that someone who is sexually active? cannot enjoy all of his sexual proclivities you know to the fullest why is it that we continue to to label or mislabel them or put them in categories that that need that need not exist simply because they wish to experience an entire sexual experience with someone now i personally i can't stand a total top and 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 I'm and I'm gonna say it like that. Yeah, I can't stand a total top and I can't stand a total bottom, because in most uh, experiences that I've had, total tops think that they are or they they go about a sexual experience like they are a straight man. Okay, they only use it. They did. They not they not being oral. They not sucking you and this that and the other. Only thing they doing is penetrating. When they get their nut, it is done. Okay. If you didn't get yours in the t- in the time frame, oh well, I'm out. And we have a lot of people, you know, a lot of our self-proclaimed bottoms and carried on, honey, who think that that's what being a man is. Now, the flip side of that, we have total bottoms who don't want to use their dick. They don't want you touching it or nothing. They only want to be on the bottom, honey. Only thing I'm supposed to do is get penetrated and, and this, that, and the other. I don't want you, I don't know. You're not supposed to be on me. I'm supposed to work on you. I'm supposed to service you. If I wanted a woman, honey, I would have had one. I, I consider all that to be selfish sex. You're in it for what you can get in it, you know, get out of it and not worry that you're not thinking about your other partner, the, the person that's there with you. And that there, uh, I have problems with those particular things. But when we talk about top shaming, why is it? Because tops don't shame each other for that. Tops don't do it. Tops don't sit down there and, and say, oh, well, you know, because you a verse top or whatever, that don't make you that. Tops don't do that. It always comes from the bottom bitches who want to, who want to, who want to throw shade and, and want to act as if there's supposed to be some kind of defining moment to masculinity. And the question becomes why? What is it in these fantasies that we have made up in our heads that's supposed to be reenacted in the bedroom or that's supposed to be after your bedroom experiences are over that you want to carry over into everyday world and it doesn't work that way. So you won't trade to sit down there and be rough and tough and carry it on and beat it up, slow it down, knock it out the box, stand up and into this, that and the other. All that works well in the bedroom. After that, that little session is over, and we come out into the real world. If he start barking orders and this, that, and the other, it becomes an argument. It becomes a fight. It becomes all that kind of stuff. Why? Because he's challenging your manhood. That's not what you signed up for. So if you're not going to sign up for it in regular everyday life, why do we accept this in the bedroom? Why are we so busy living in the fantasy of sex to where we do not know how to get a grip on reality everywhere else? If a top wants to sit down and and have a total experience and he claims he's to be a verse top, why is that a problem? Why is it a problem when we hear a man say, yes, I get penetrated? Why is it that we always see that as a weakness? Do Do we equate penetration to be very womanly because we still see women as a weakness? 
we still see women as the weaker sex. So anytime the thought of a man being penetrated, oh, then he's a sissy, he ain't no man at all. Is that what this is? Cause we get that from our heteroattractional counterparts. That's that's part of the fight when we talk about what masculinity is and what it's supposed to look like. But when we do that in, internally, why is it that we beat each other down internally when we already have the odds stacked up against us? Okay, why is it that we let sex dictate to us in a way that we've allowed sex or our heteroattractional counterparts have allowed our sexual, our bedroom activities to define who we are? See, they don't know nothing. And, and then it's to define who we are based on what they think we're doing. There's many of us, honey, out there who don't have penetrative sex, you know, but our counterparts want to believe that that's all we do. You know what I'm saying? Our counterparts don't want to believe that two masculine men, honey, can actually have sex. And it's always, well, who's the bitch or who's the woman of the relationship? If I told you both of us are because we do each other, what does that mean? Okay. Because there is no bitch in this relationship. You're dealing with two men. Okay, and we both have needs and carrying on, and the goal is to make sure the needs are met, right? At least in the sex. Well, we'll take that across the board, but I'm talking sexual right now. Okay, so why is it that we have allowed top shaming to become an issue, or have we? Because I know when I was talking with the with my with my younger uh, little nieces and nephews that carried on out here. Uh, when I was talking with them, it's like. It was an issue. One one who happens to the, the 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 one who brought it up, who happens to be the top. He was like, you know, it's like we we can't get a pass. And we can't we can't explore. We can't be sexual. We only have to live within this box. And it's been interesting that every time we that the community, the alphabet community, always say we celebrate diversity. Everything that comes up in here that is outside of the norm, we always got to fight against. Isn't that what we're supposed to be? We're supposed to be accepting and celebrating the diverse ones, those who are different. But yet every time we come up with something different and challenging or whatever, it becomes an issue within our community too. First, we got all these subsections of a subsection of a subsection. How are you going to be a big boy proud, but yet we done sat down and broke all this down to be chubby, thick, husky, um, uh, muscular, super chubby. Okay, we have so many categories of what the hell this thing is supposed to be to it. It's like, okay, what's the point? What the fuck is the point? You know, and then we hide, I, I, y'all will hear me say this often, we hide our prejudices up under the umbrella term of preference. Oh, that's just my preference. That's just my preference. When most of the time, honey, you have you don't have a preference. You have a lot of prejudices and preconceived notions of why that's not going to work for you when you never even tried it. Now, some things you folks will say, well, I know I ain't tried crack. I'm not to know that I don't like it. Okay, that's an extreme example, bitch. Okay, don't come for me like that because, you know, oftentimes, honey, preconceived notions means that you are scared to try because you don't know what it is you don't know what it looks like and most of the time is you don't want talk you don't want folks talking about you because you were the big dude or whatever so a lot of times that's what it is we get into dick shaming you know y'all size queens up there claim that y'all want all this much dick i need to have eight nine ten eleven inches men bitch we fat boys what fat boy do you know is gonna that there is an anomaly to come across a big dude who's over 300 pounds that's packing like that okay we have big boy pride honey so why is this an is this an issue and i also want to believe that top shaming coming from bottoms is coming because oftentimes i think it's a dick size i think that you feel as though that because you have a penis and you claim to be all this much of a man that your penis is only supposed to work because I found somebody who got a dick that works that satisfies me. And because you're insecure with using yours or don't want to use yours because you think you are this much of a bitch or a womb or puss or whatever, that you decide to put your insecurities on that other person. And want to make them wrong for wanting to sit up there and have a wonderful experience when for whatever reason you feel as though you can't, shouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't, or whatever the case may be. So we got some internalized cleaning that we need to do, children. 
why is it that top shaming is becoming a thing? How come a top just can't experience having a good time like most folks want to have a good time and have a full overall experience in the bedroom like most folks want to? We keep saying that we want to we don't want to be like our heteroattractional counterparts. We don't want that heteronormative um, narrative. But yet we refuse to allow ourselves to create our own because we're still following in the paths of heteronarrative uh, engagements. So how are we going to fix that? By allowing ourselves and giving ourselves the permission to create our own. So we need to have more discussions and stuff like this so that we can come out of those fantasies and allow the fantasy to have. Fantasies are good for a certain place, but we have to learn how to let the narrative be that all of this can be real. And then when you sit down and really get in tune with yourself so you can understand what you really like and don't like versus fantasizing what it's supposed to be, I think we were able to move forward and have a better sexual, healthy experience. Um, I believe it would be uh, a more gratifying and a more loving and a more participatory experience versus just seeming alone, you're just tricking and you just in it to get a nun and going about your business. You, you know what I'm saying? That there is selfish. It's very, 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 very selfish. So on that note, my darlings, let me get myself together. I have a plane to catch to get back to the ATL. Cause we got to go to the donut factory when I get there. <laughs> I've had a good time here. Um, if you've never heard of Big Boy Pride, I'm going to encourage you to go to the website, www.bigboypride.com www.bigboypride.com uh, Let's make that happen and um, we we will talk with you guys soon, okay? So, listen, I'm Big Meat and this here is the Big Meat moment. If you got questions, comments, or concerns, put your comments down wherever you're seeing this and let's talk about it, honey. We could dish this tea, you hear me? Ha. I'll talk with you again soon. We love you to pieces and all your parts that there is Reverend Karen Taylor, my big brother, that's his saying. <laughs> I, I, Kevin, I took that because <laughs> I love it. All right. Ciao. <laughs>